defeat the enemies of freedom with chemical warfare, suicide bombers, and slave labor. Arm an angry mob with AK-47s. Employ propaganda centers, exercise utter military superiority, and employ weapons of mass destruction. And enjoy the wonders of a great game from a simpler time, where game devs could throw pretty much anything in a video game without worry of absolute financial ruin. Forces continue their liberation. And I have some shoes. America and China were pretty simple. Tensions are high. Senseless American aggression once more fills the sky. Our Korea again denied involvement. The military had the fragmented Global Liberation Army on the run. Split groups humiliating America by penetrating its own borders and raiding its weapons of mass destruction. Further transmission may be difficult. This is Command and Conquer General Zero Hour. Experience butter smooth, hard locked 30 FPS gameplay in sweltering 800 by 600 resolution on EA's highly regarded Origin platform with 2003 game design and dreadful graphics by modern standards. I tried messing with the game files to make it run in 1080p 60 FPS, but the game mechanics are locked to the frame rate and it really messes the game up. The resolution doesn't actually change, it just stretches the game to your whole screen to achieve a widescreen resolution, in which case I personally prefer these black bars. Zero Hour was my childhood and definitely my most formative RTS game, but you can definitely tell it's a 15 year old game. The first thing I noticed is how the graphics look like complete doo-doo, but what about the gameplay? Does it hold up? We will cleanse them from our land! Sort of. I guess. For this video, I also tried installing the community mod Rise of the Reds, which provides a whopping two additional factions, the tank-heavy Russian Federation and the defense-oriented European Continental Alliance. It greatly expands and redesigns the game in a variety of ways, as Russia deploys Schmel Troopers, Tesla coils, and the one-man army known as Boris. My name is Boris Bikov. I'm so drunk right now. When the capitalist pigs are hurting for a squirtin', activate the glorious Tremor AGAS. Which, in my humble opinion, is easily the coolest super weapon in the game. The European Continental Alliance is unplayable, both because if you play an RTS game defensively, you're actually a stage 4 bibliotech cretin who needs to stop coping and start roping. But more so because you'd have to listen to your god-awful culturally diverse troops throughout the whole process. Come on, I'm not paid by the hour. Where's the party? Driver, get us up on there! We oui, oui, general. They're Proceeding. shooting at us. You Lot. just love cracking that whip, don't ya? Who's signing these contracts? Everything's ready for you, senor. Infantry, here! We'll stop them dead in the truck, sir. Don't worry, we got this. Where's a panda when you need one? Yeah, there's plenty of cool ways you could have implemented Europe into an RTS game. That's not one of them. As for Zero Hour without the mod, play as the US. I'll build anywhere. Get into work. Make my own road. I'll build anywhere. Sorry, I can't build there. Ooh, can't do that. Specking into either weapons of mass destruction, laser technology, or aerial superiority. You Alternatively, play as China, further specializing in tanks, nuclear weapons, or infantry divisions. Or walk the path of liberty and justice. Play as the Global Liberation Army, specializing in either camouflage, toxic weaponry, or bombs and explosives. GLA Postal Service. Nothing stops the mail. There's some funny-ass shit in this game. Shit they wouldn't dare put in a game nowadays. For example, when you play as China or the US, you have these big, powerful machines making all your structures for you. But when you play as the GLA, it's just this one little guy without shoes, who doesn't exactly give me the impression that this work is voluntary. This is hard work. Can I have some shoes? This may be painful. Do not hurt me. I will obey. I'm just a peasant. I'm hungry. Oh, okay, okay, I will work. 
if I really have to. Okay, here I go. You'll push this impoverished poor little guy to build an entire missile silo all by himself. If he serves you well, you can even buy him the shoes he keeps asking for on the black market, which will in turn make him work even harder. I like my new shoes. These shoes fit nicely. Thank you for the new shoes. It's actually one of the best upgrades in the game. All of your legally employed workers work twice as fast for only a thousand dollars. You make off like a bandit. There are, however, laborers that don't accept their lot in life, and as such, they're entirely unfit to fight for our cause. Will I be treated with dignity? Cannot we live in peace? It is better to surrender than stay here. Don't get me wrong. As a fellow servant of peace, I'm no fan of Dr. Thrax, iron-fisted ruler of the GLA Toxin Division, or Holy Prophet resting upon his golden throne, praise be his soul. But when someone says something heretical, like sacrifice a thousand soldiers a day to clear the enemy landmines, the correct response is, where do I find these landmines? Not to assume the worst and shriek, that's how civil discourse dies. Ah! It burns! It burns! <coughs> By the way, this game is entirely banned in China, which is completely justified. That is my own opinion, and I wish prosperity upon the motherland. Please don't blacklist me from China. More interestingly, this game was outright banned in Germany due to the then imminent Iraq war. The Bundesportfälle for Jugendfahrten in Medien put the game onto the list of media harmful to young people. To get around the ban, in 2003 EA released a localized German version specifically for the German market called Command and Conquer Generale. Every unit, <laughs> every, every unit in the game is now a robot, and the suicide bomber was, was replaced with this vehicle. To really sell the robot units, they put like. They put this. They put this reverb effect over all the voices. <laughs> Luckily, I live right next to Germany, in a third world country known as Denmark, so I can be a full-time employee of the GLA Postal Service. Just in general, the voice lines in this game are borderline fucking comedy. They cannot destroy China! My hands have splinters. I'll disguise myself as a vehicle. We're going down! We will turn them into soup! I love this new technology! I am alone! <laughs> Hold on, everybody! I need protection! I cannot guarantee their safety. Die! <laughs> Bow to China! Turn them into mud! Will you not let me die honorably? This was not the plan! I just wanted to borrow a car! Minigana reporting for duty! They are disabled. <laughs> you! Out of my bus! Nowhere to hide. I'm unarmed! Leave me alone, you bully! Please, please, no! <laughs> Yeah, I manually extracted and went through 1900 sound files for the units in this game, just for that. And uh, and I, I don't regret the way I spent my time, I, I think it's quite fulfilling to be honest. I'd say the meat of the gameplay is either playing skirmishes against CPUs or other people. As with most RTS games, that's the structural foundation of what makes the game. The skirmishes hold up even 15 years after the game's release. On hard, this game is a serious challenge, and with Rise of the Reds you can beat the game on brutal, which... Yeah. CPUs and RTSs have always been very janky, and this game is no exception. Here, I've disguised a dozen bomb trucks as American bulldozers. Don't mind the fact that you guys have literally one bulldozer, and that I'm running over all your soldiers. It's probably just an accident. Then one of these 15 bulldozers turned out to be a hidden bomb truck that devastated your base. The other 14 are still nothing to worry about. One lesson I learned the hard way is that if you're gonna spend every last hard-earned dinar of your war funds on one final assault, it's a fatal error to have all the bomb trucks next to each other. A warrior has fallen. That was the day the mail didn't arrive. Same goes for the suicide bombers. Don't do what I did. Understanding some of the units can give you a pretty insane advantage. Against infantry, the sniper is extremely overpowered. They can easily take out 20 men in 10 seconds, then go back to being stealthed. Put a sniper in a Humvee, and you can actually take them to fucking Sprinkle Town. Every faction suits a different playstyle. My favorite is the GLA, as they're optimal for rush, where you try to run down your enemies as fast as possible. The GLA structures don't require power, and your holy empire operates on cheap labor. Suicide bombers and bomb trucks are unironically phenomenal at fucking people up early game. Add in promotion abilities that give you cash equivalent to a percentage of every unit or building you destroy, a map-wide sneak attack, and the most overpowered super weapon in the game, now we're talking. 
For a game that's 15 years old, it's extremely aware, both culturally and politically. The overarching themes of the campaign are still very relevant to this day. It's said in the near future, the United States and People's Republic of China are the world's two superpowers. And they're the targets of the Global Liberation Army, an omnipresent, borderless terrorist organization fighting as a fanatical, irregular force. When you play as a faction, you see their side of the war. Whether that's securing your borders and building a glorious empire for China, or acquiring cash by raiding United Nations convoys as well as causing mass riots. Or deploying the US military in Iraq, Yemen and eventually Kazakhstan to liberate the countries from GLA control. The base game actually ends with the GLA succeeding and the expansion ends with China liberating Europe from the incursion. I'm surprised at how the actual storyline of this 15 year old game is politically relevant today. I'm not even trying to make some edgy joke or whatever, like seriously, this game is very relevant in the modern day political climate. But let's talk a bit more about the gameplay. This is Zero Hour at its best. Once you familiarize yourself with the majority of the mechanics in play, and you're no longer painstakingly waiting for one unit to finish its actions. Nah. You're building your base whilst moving your armies. You're also doing everything you can to secure war funds and oil derricks, while simultaneously launching an aerial assault to take out the enemy super weapons. Then suddenly... Warning. Sneak attack detected. Our base is being attacked, sir. They built a tunnel network inside our base without us knowing it. Oh, shit. I'll admit it. I'm having a good time here, this is fucking gameplay. I played the expansion campaigns for all three factions, and completing them took me roughly 15 hours. Once you actually understand the game, I'd estimate 3-4 to four hours per campaign. The missions are nothing exceptional, and I think it's a better tool to get into the game than anything else. Going back to this game over 10 years after I played it originally kinda killed some of the nostalgia I had for it. It's very dated. There's no way to skip cutscenes, so remember to save all the time. This game runs in full screen, and if you tab out, it's very likely to crash. You will accidentally tab out of it if you use your mouse to move the camera. Even in the unlikely event that it doesn't crash, it often just opens up with no audio, which will require a restart anyways. There's plenty of community mods to fix a lot of these problems, unfortunately none of them work with the way EA and Origin reorganized the any game files. In the campaign, many of the levels are extremely linear and I don't like that. There's one certain way of completing the mission. You can choose to do it in a different way, which just means doing it slower. In general, a lot of the missions play super slow. There's this one mission where every enemy base is stealthed and you just gotta scour the whole map with radar vans. Perhaps you'd like to defend against waves of enemies coming in. 80% of the mission is just waiting. It isn't challenging on any level and level design has come a long way in 15 years. Here, they just give you half an hour to disable these two missile silos and put a bunch of annoying shit in the way. I forgot to save throughout the mission and captured the last silo literally a second too late, so I had to do that over. Building capture complete. This was not the plan. The point I'm trying to make is that by no means is this intuitive game design. To stretch the game out, they made these missions that just take way too long. I don't like when game developers confuse a game taking long with actual content. Like in this mission, you just gotta wait for these trucks to very slowly carry 20 shipments of toxins and explosives onto this American plane you're hijacking. Wait. We will get our revenge, you filthy Americans! Yeah, you wouldn't get away with that in 2019. To sum it up, the campaign is pretty underwhelming, and the game certainly isn't pretty. But you gotta remember that this is a 15 year old game. If you compare Generals to other RTS games released in 2003 like Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne, it actually looks quite polished. In fact, it looks better than the vast majority of games released that year. Visually speaking, this game doesn't look terrible, it just looks old. Skirmishes against other people or CPUs is the real content of the game though, and if you can look past some of the flaws, there's a pretty rewarding and unique RTS experience underneath. Whether you want to globalize Marxism, listen to terrible impressions of European accents, propagate aggressive capitalism, defend the values of the motherland, or liberate the West, this game certainly has a playstyle that you'd enjoy. After over 30 hours on this game, I then found out you can spin the camera. That would have been fucking good to know. I rate Command and Conquer General Zero Hour, don't, out of play it, with an added footnote. If you actually want to bother experiencing this game the way you're meant to, download and install Rise of the Reds up to patch 1.86. It works with the game on Origin and the other version, which I trust you definitely installed from the game CD you had laying around. I included a link to an install guide which includes the download links for everything you'll need in the description. If you manage to play it without any major performance issues, I suggest you buy a lottery ticket. If you can't be bothered with all that shit just to experience a 15 year old game, but you still want an old school RTS experience, I point you towards Tiberian Sun and Red Alert 2. Those are both fantastic games. 
If you want a more modern Command & Conquer experience, check out Red Alert 3. More videos to come soon. And remember, it's not about whether or not it would be optimal for your war funds, it's about whether or not he's earned those fucking shoes. The weapons grade uranium shells will destroy the enemy! Can I have some shoes? China will not forget me!